Ladies and gentlemen, Titan Lake. This is by far perhaps one of the most important CPU architectures that Intel have been working on for a long, long time. And the reasons as I'm going through this video will become abundantly clear. Now, I think it's fair to say that recently AMD have just simply been dominant over Intel. Yeah, sure, the 9800X3D has been really great for gamers, just for the sake of argument. But overall, mindshare for uh, Intel has just been going down. And that's to say absolutely nothing of other markets like for example server and of course things like laptops as well however intel has a plan now next year we will see the launch of nova lake and it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how nova lake fares against zen 6 ryzen 10,000 or whatever you want to call it of course it's rumored to be 24 cores 48 threads and meanwhile nova lake is 48 uh, cores plus four LPE cores. So that's 16 performance cores, 32 E cores, and once again, the LPE cores. With that said, Titan Lake, the rumor is that this is a new unified core project. And it's not the same thing as Royal Core. So Royal Core, um, which was a room that was swelling around for several years at this point, seems to have just been put on life support and then the plug was pulled. So yeah, it's no longer a thing, but a different team has working on that, been working on their own unified core project, and that is Titan Lake. And according to various rumors and whispers and projections, we could be seeing up to a hundred cores, which is pretty impressive. But anyway, let me put my glasses on and we'll be going through some of this stuff, shall we? So Silicon Fly on Twitter, which is a really good account, by the way, suggest you guys give it a follow. This is particularly true if you're interested in process nodes and other kind of cool stuff. But anyway, most of this information is already available, but the new leak confirms most of it and sheds more light. It says the Razer Lake Griffin core is the last of the Intel performance cores. So no more coves, basically. Nope, nope, nope. I'm sorry, but coves, you know, dear coves, as uh, Silicon sa says. You had a good run. It was nice knowing you. So, yeah, instead, Intel will be going uh, kind of like an evolution of the E cores. And as they state here, the Titan Lake is a new unified core. The focus is on higher PPA, PPW, and the meaning is to be more efficient, compact, and performance. Now, I'm going to ignore just for the sake of, you know, keeping things in somewhat of a reasonably easy to follow format. We'll ignore the link here to Zihu, and instead I'm gonna scroll down to a second of Silicon Fly's tweets. And basically they say that the core ratio is approximately one to three, excluding L2. With Arctic Wolf and future unified cores, of course the E core size is going to increase because obviously the E cores, the efficient cores, are basically just doing more stuff. Taking all of this into account, it's possible that we could see Titan Lake go from up to 48 plus 48 plus four LPE cores. And that's a hundred total. Now it is worth noting that Silicon Fly, of course, is speculating here. This is not a hundred percent leak, but technically speaking, we could see an absolutely crazy and insane core count. Now I also just want to put a pin pause for just a second, because I know inevitably some folks are going to have a few questions what the hell is a unified core and what is royal core project and what exactly does it mean well basically i'm sure most of you know that uh, with amd for example you have different versions of cores you have the classic core you have the dense cores and so on but ultimately speaking they are essentially based on the same design meanwhile well, Intel hasn't done that. They've obviously had like performance and energy efficient cores for quite some time now. Typically speaking, you've got more performance, sorry, you've got more energy efficient cores than performance cores, and the performance cores obviously have well higher performance, but Intel has removed SMT from the performance cores. So for example, with Arrow Lake, there's no SMT anymore. Now Let's just focus on SMT just for a second because it actually provides us a good reference point. So with simultaneous multi-threading, the idea is, and obviously I think at least for customers processors, if memory serves, the first processor that did SMT was Pentium 4, but I don't think it was the first 
for servers. It might be a PowerPC architecture. Someone correct me in the comments. I'm not 100% certain on servers or professional usage. Anyway, what does matter is SMT, basically speaking, will take one physical processor core and it will divvy up the resources as required and essentially split that core so it can handle two different threads. So for example, let's just make things really simple and so that you have one megabyte of cache on the core. Let's just ignore all the different cache levels. What it would do is basically the whole one megabyte, it would split it and obviously you might have one thread that takes a little bit more, a little bit less, and obviously you've got integer and all of the other bits of the processor core, which is doing things, but essentially it would schedule things and hopefully anyway, it will lead to performance improvement because again, you're having that core essentially be able to schedule work um, much more efficiently. With that said, it does of course result in performance increases in some workloads, but not all applications will benefit so much. So for example, some applications, it's going to be a small improvement. If an application isn't particularly multi-threaded, it's not going to be any improvement at all because it's single-threaded and so on and so on. And that's to say nothing of the architecture itself. Okay, I want you to think of the Royal Core project, at least in its initial conception. And from what we can understand, this unified core design, kind of similar, but the reverse. So it's basically the Star Trek mirror universe approach. So while, while you would divvy up the cores to be able to do different things, so again, let's just say you had one uh, core and it would handle two different threads. This one, you're converging the cores to do one specific task. Now this gives you a lot of flexibility in theory, because if you have like, just hypothetically say you had a game running on Unreal Engine and let's say one or two or three threads are really hammering them, it's just really hammering those cores, more cores come together and basically they could do more stuff faster. You would have more execution units, it would be able to just be faster. Now that's not 100% technically accurate, and things have changed a little bit because again, this is a different team. This is not the Royal Core project, but it's just to get everyone roughly onto the same page because, you know, it's, I think it's good just to have some kind of like, you know, rough idea of where, where we're all coming from. Now, this brings us to another set of threads. Um, post generation, which is on Zihu. I've probably mispronounced that. I apologize. And I am using Google Translate. Nova Lake will have a big boost. It's correct that it's 2, 8 plus 16 on the TSMC process. Compute tile has been greatly improved. Zen 6, again, they're just reiterating the fact that the CCD now is going to be 12 cores per CCD. So, of course, that's 24 uh, cores total, 48 threads, as we've spoken about. And there's a really interesting, uh, which I'm not going to go into here, but there's a really lengthy post that basically goes into the history of Intel's CPU teams versus AMDs. I would recommend you guys read this if you're interested in this kind of stuff. To my understanding, it is true that this is now made by the E-Core team and the P-Core team. They've been helping out a little bit with this stuff, but ultimately it's kind of like their baby. I will be very interested to see how Intel actually turns around the company. I'll be honest, guys, like there have been... There's been a lot of uh, bad news for Intel, and um, I, I really want them to turn around, especially on the GPU side of things as well, because Battle Mage, you know, the lower end Battle Mages that have already released, they seem pretty damn cool, um, and it's very frustrating that we haven't had the you know the the, the Fay One version. Uh, like I would love to see G thirty one released. Um, at a, at the moment, it seems that the they're just like cutting so many positions and I really hope that uh, these projects actually release like that's the thing with Nova Lake for example most of the sources I've spoken to with Nova Lake I'm just going to be really honest like they say oh it actually does seem really good now how really good compares against AMD and versus their previous generations We'll have to wait and see. But the main concern isn't, oh, it seems really good, as in, like, will it be performant and decent? It's like, yeah, will it actually see the light of day, or will we see big cuts in it, and will they just go down to, like, one tile, or the BLLC version get not gets released, or something like that? I don't know. Oh, and before I let you go, now I've been saying Titan multiple times in this video, I really want another bloody Titan for. Hmm. With that said, take care of yourselves.
Bye for now.